In this scenario, we need a way of changing things within our live set over the course of a live performance where we'll be performing multiple songs with each song having different settings. Now, of course, there's already multiple ways of doing this. This is simply a new way uh, that most people probably haven't seen, and so I think it's worth demonstrating. I should also mention that I'm going to keep things very simple for this demonstration. Trying to show you hundreds of changes happening in a live set uh, just really wouldn't work out too well in a, in a video. Um, and so we're just going to kind of keep things simple, but hopefully give you an idea of how you can just keep on building with this. All right. To accomplish this, we're going to be using this device, which is included with ClipX Pro. It's a simple Max for Live device and a drum rack. And this allows the notes in a MIDI clip to be used for triggering ClipX Pro actions. And this is extremely powerful. It has lots of different use cases. If you want to see another example of it in action, check out uh, the ClipX Pro Q&A episode where we cover playing and arranging. That's on YouTube, by the way. Uh, and you can see there where we use this device to arrange and rearrange songs on the fly. But in this case, we're going to use it for handling changes throughout the course of a live performance. The set that I've got here is very simple. It's just got uh, two instrument tracks, one with reactor on it and another with an instrument rack on it. And we'll just go through programming two simple songs to kind of show you how this all works. So I already have a clip here. This is going to represent our first song, and it's just four bars long. Obviously, that's a, a very short song, but it'll do for this demonstration. And I just have four actions set up uh, here right now. Okay, we'll add more as we, we go along. And um, what we want to do first is control the preset selection in Reactor. All right, so in song one, in the first bar, we want to be on this preset. And then when we get to the third bar, maybe that, we'll call that the hook, uh, we want to be on this preset. All right, and let's see that in action. Okay, so it changes to the Floss preset. And then to Bosco. All right, great. Now let's say in the second song, we'll just duplicate that first song, that we want to use a different preset. So in the beginning of the song here, we'll use Simplo. And then when we get to the hook here, we're going to be using a different instrument, so we're just going to leave that blank for now. And now you can see when we get to song two, it changes to Simplo. All right, great. Now we need to think about getting MIDI into this track. Right now, this track will not receive MIDI input. Uh, we either need to control the monitoring status or the arm switch. Uh, for a live performance, uh, controlling monitoring would probably make more sense, so that's what we'll do. So I'll add a couple actions here. Uh, this one will turn monitoring to in, and then this one will turn monitoring off. Okay, so now let's go to song one and make sure at the beginning there, uh, monitoring is set to in. And then in song two, again, uh, we want to set monitoring to in just in case we change the song order. We want to make sure that at the, be at the beginning of this song, monitoring is set to in. And then when we get to the third bar here, our hook, we're going to be using a different instrument, so we're going to set monitoring state to off. All right, and now we can see that along with the preset changes, now we've got those monitoring state changes. All right, so in and then in, and it'll switch to off in the third bar. All right, great. Now let's just do one more thing on that track. We'll control its panning. All right, so I'll add a couple more actions in here. This one will set the panning to the left, and this one will set the panning to the right. Okay, and in song one, we'll set panning to the right, I'm sorry, to the left, and then in song two, we'll set it to the right. All right, and now we'll have panning changes. Okay, so that's it for this track. And now let's think about this track now. Uh, I guess the first thing we need to do is control its monitoring status, right? So we'll go ahead and add some actions for that, just like we did for the previous track. Okay, so in the beginning of a song one here, I want to make sure that the monitoring status is off. And then for song two, again, at the beginning, the monitoring status is off. And then when we get to the uh, hook, I want to set the monitoring status to in. All right, and now we can see the monitoring status will be changed here now. Okay, and then when we get to that third bar, we get the changes we need. Great. All right, and just one other thing we want to do on that track, and that is to uh, change the settings of the instrument. All right, so we want to be able to change these macros. All right, but first we want to make sure that we know what the default settings are. So what we'll do uh, is just capture those settings. We can use this action named dev set for that. And this will capture the current settings of all the macros. Okay, which, oh. 
All right, and I'm just going to copy this out and put it in here. All right, and then uh, we want to have some alternate settings. So for that, we use dev set again, and I'll just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. All right, so now at the beginning of the song, we want to have the default settings. And then when we get to, uh, you know what, I should have done that there too. All right, that's, see this set here, that's not necessarily, or I'm sorry, the, the one here, that's not necessarily needed, but just for the sake of uh, consistency, let me change that in this second one here. I say that's not needed because we only have one device on that track. If we have add more though, we would need that one to specify that we want to operate on the first um, device on that track. All right, so now they're both the same. So again, at the first bar, we're going to uh, use the default settings. And when we get to, let's say the fourth bar, let's say that'll be maybe a middle eight or the outro, we want to use these different settings. All right, and now you can see that those macros will all change once we get to that fourth bar. And of course, we want to make sure that the default settings are in place when we start playing the song. And that's, that's the case here. So you can see default settings. And then when we get to that fourth bar, that's when the, the new settings will take place. All right. And so we have song one. It does everything it needs to do. And then song two. All right, so again, a simplistic example, but hopefully it shows you the power of being able to control your live set in this way um, and in a very visual way too.